Would you believe if I told you the decrease in productivity and employee burnout is due to toxic workplace cultures? Greetings everyone, my name is Rosh Ramasamy. I am a university lecturer, a PhD student, a published author and a developmental educator. This video is precious to me. There has been a growing body of research that has given me deep intellectual insight coupled with my own personal lived experiences having to negotiate and navigate toxic workplace cultures. I was inspired to create this vlog based on my own experiences having to support people who are negotiating and navigating toxic environments in an active and passive way but also the inspiration I get from an amazing human being, Professor Tara Brabazon. She is my eternal role model, mentor and coach who has given me and instilled in me courage, innovation and generosity. I hope you enjoy the video. Allow me to provide you with an operational definition of toxic workplace environments or cultures. I refer to a number of published sources that explored and reported on toxic environments in the workplace. And there is one paper that I felt encapsulated the concept beautifully. And this paper is by Apple, Boom and colleagues. And they defined toxic organizations as largely ineffective and destructive processes that thrive on control and is crisis driven. Through my own research, I have compiled some common characteristics that feature within toxic workplace organizations. And these are as follows. Poor communication skills, poor interpersonal relationship skills driven by self-centered agenda, huge amount of wastage having to rework and revisit content as a result of incongruity or inconsistency in approaches, the inability to work in a team environment, the inability to appreciate and acknowledge employees' strengths and assets and the inability to understand and have a shared vision of the organisation they serve. So if this is such a big problem, why are people not doing anything or something big about it? Well, people are afraid of being exposed. People are afraid to speak up, to lose their jobs, to feel compromised, to get their hours reduced, to be a victim of bullying, of more bullying. And the list just goes on. You know, the no harassment policy in workplaces is merely a fallacy. It's time to speak up and expose bad behavior, period. You know, it's never been easy for me personally as well to speak up, to challenge a person who has more power over me, or well, they think they do, but it's difficult. I acknowledge that. But we can't let these behaviors to perpetuate and to continue because it's damaging lives every second. So we need to acknowledge that we can't let these bad behaviors infiltrate our lives. We have families to support. We have families who depend on us. We have our own lives to care about. We can start from today to expose those bad behaviors and to make people be accountable 
of what they're doing to other people. All I'm asking you to do is to be active and not remain passive. Let me share an example with you. Recently, I was disturbed by a few matters in the workplace. So I reached out to national bodies and professionals for advice. And that includes TIGSA, which is the Tertiary Education Quality Standards Agency, uh, Legal Aid, my barrister. I reached out to the Workplace Ombudsman and other bodies as well, just to get some advice and guidance on my next steps forward. It is really important that you remain professional, objective at all times, park those emotions aside momentarily, and get help for those emotions on a different platform, keep those emotions separate from what you're doing here with those toxic environments. I do acknowledge that being active translates differently for different people, and that's fine too. Do what's right for you and what gives you comfort. It could be speaking to someone, a friend. It could be speaking to professional bodies. Get good advice. Get objective and solid advice. When you document or journal those experiences, you are collating those experiences, but also collate experiences from other employees who are experiencing a similar or parallel issue, which will start to build up a case. We all like case studies here. As a developmental educator, we live and breathe case studies. We look at people's lives. So it's really important that when you bring all those experiences together, we look for commonalities. And when we expose bad behaviors, we need evidence, not just he say, she say, we need evidence that are tangible. As I mentioned to you earlier, always remain active and objective. Your emotions are important, okay? Now, I'm a crier, a big crier. I tend to cry and let all the emotions out. That's fine too. Pick the right person and the right platform for it. There are professionals who will support you wholeheartedly in that grievance process, trying to unpack those distressing emotions, but equally remain composed, coherent and integral when approaching toxic workplace environments. So to conclude the video, I'm gonna give you three tips that has helped me and might help you negotiate and navigate toxic workplace environments and cultures. Tip one, filter, filter, filter. Filter what you see and what you take in. Filter, I think it relates a lot to compartmentalization. Compartmentalize your thoughts your emotions, the task, the outcomes. So when you start to filter things, take in what is important, what is important to the job that you do, filter the rest out, filter the bullshit, filter the dramas, filter the chaos, filter the gossips. If you start to see passive-aggressive behaviors, filter those as well. Pretend you're not even there. I tell you what, being a dancer, pretending has come very easy for me. I can pretend play. Tip two, keep the communication to a bare minimum, but you must remain professional at all times. Communicate when is required, communicate when you need to do your job. Don't just ignore the person or persons for the sake of ignoring them, but keep it purely on a professional level. Tip three, lead by example. 
you know, this is something I've found. Sometimes those toxic people become frustrated or confronted when you perform your best. They try to interfere and create more chaos. But always remain composed, on centered, integral and focused and driven in achieving your goals. And most importantly as well, be true to the organization you serve. And this is what has helped me. Be an example or lead by example, because I have my values and also I have the values of my organization and I try to align our values to form common ground and then I enact those values through my behaviors and conduct. Ignore people, ignore the rest, focus on yourself and remain true to your organization that you serve. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. I'll be attaching a few different resources in the description of this video for you to peruse in your own free time. I also urge you to refer to Professor Tara Brabazon's vlog on how to avoid work, toxic workplace culture. I'll also attach a link for you to go into that video as well. The discussions with her late husband, Professor Steve Redhead, has been instrumental in the development of this vlog as well, but to also provide you with a comprehensive understanding on how to negotiate and navigate toxic workplace environments. On that note, I wish you all the best. Onwards and upwards, love rush.